In today's show, the new order, players rise to another level. There's having a knowledge of game plan and then there's actually experiencing what a game plan is. And what can a serve of sauce bring to the young squad? Hi, I'm Mark Bickley and welcome to a new season of The Crows Show, brought to you by the new Pork Belly Deluxe Burger, only at Hungry Jack's. Also joining us, Belinda Sloan, who catches up with a player who's every coach's dream. Ebony Marinoff goes way beyond what's demanded of every Crows AFLW player and that's what makes her such a champion. Shortly, Bix, we'll find out what drives her. Thanks, Belinda. Now, as we count down to the Crows' opening game, fans have been told they can look forward to an entertaining brand of footy. Matthew Nix says the emphasis in pre-season training has been on improving consistency through greater mental strength. But how is he progressing as senior coach? Most of my developments come in, in listening, spending a lot more time opening up, listening to players, listening to fellow coaches uh, and get an understanding of where they sit. And we feel like we're well and truly ahead of where we were this time last year and now it's just a matter of a little bit of luck coming into to round one that uh, we're all available and we can have a good hit out against Freo. Chase Jones has he made the necessary adjustment, you bet he has, drives it through on the run, another exciting goal for the crowd. There's having a knowledge of game plan and then there's actually experiencing what a game plan is or uh, playing at the level. And our guys last year, they, they were able to add to their experience on field. So from a coaching point of view, we, we've got real confidence in the fact that our group are now 12 months on. More importantly, it's 20 odd games. These guys have now had a season under their belt more than they did last year. Um, they got things right during that season and it was really pleasing to see them play some good footy. They also got things wrong at times and, and what we, I guess, want to make sure from here is that we've learnt from those mistakes. Keezy, great look coming through here. I think if our Crows fans continue to come out, they'll enjoy some really exciting footy. You know, we're looking at this year about doing small tweaks around our game plan. We want to play an entertaining style of footy. We want to be aggressive with the footy um, you know, when we get our chances and we still want to put some of the performances out like we did last year when we were at our best. The key to a lot of it is the consistency and you know, that's where we're doing most of our work at the moment is our ability to mentally stay in the game and stay strong. Um, but what I, what I can say is if, you know, if stick with us. The boys, are, they're going to play an exciting brand for you. It's going to be an entertaining brand of footy. It'll be the DNA we talked about last year where we're, we're in the oppo's face um, and we're up for the fight. Up for a fight. That's what we want to hear. Well, the squad has certainly embraced the new regime of high performance manager Darren Burgess. He arrived at the club as one of the best credentialed specialists in sport, having helped Melbourne to last year's premiership and with Premier League experience at Arsenal and Liverpool. He's had an immediate impact, driving players to an extra level of fitness. In a major coup for the Crows, Melbourne Premiership winning high performance manager Darren Burgess will be at Westlake's next season. So what attracted me to working with the Crows was the opportunity to help develop a young list. Um, we've got a pretty young coaching group as well, uh, so to work with Nixie again, uh, but predominantly to, to, to try and develop a young list and, and see it through a journey to, uh, to achieving the ultimate success. The guys that have impressed from the experienced players, guys like Rory Laird who really know um, what it takes to be professional and his dedication to his sort of craft is, is really impressive. Uh, guys like Ned, Mc, Ned McHenry who just never stopped working and, and Riley Philthorpe. Um, yeah, for such a young kid, his dedication, uh, often I'm trying to hold Riley back a little bit. But honestly, the playing group have been unbelievable. Their, their work ethic and their capacity for work is, is really exceptional and a credit to the previous fitness staff. Our benchmarks are typically win-loss, you know, that's what we're all here on the same path, we want to win games, so uh, although we look at injury rates and, and uh, I guess GPS metrics in games and things like that, predominantly no one cares if you run more or if you lose, so um, yeah, we're, we're all about wins here. Certainly a great pickup for the Crows. Stay with us. After the break, Belinda Sloan meets the club champion, stretching her ability.
When Ebony Marinoff became the first Crows women's player to reach the 50 game milestone, her coach gave her the ultimate compliment. Matthew Clark says that she always puts in unconditional effort and only has one gear, flat out. She's supremely fit and Pilates is just one of her extra routines to improve performance. I think like just all the deep core muscles that you use that we wouldn't use in the gym. I had a really sore lower back and stuff so doing all these different movements has really helped and like I've been pain free for probably like two years which like playing footy is unheard of. Alan, it's a Marinoff. And that's given her amazing resilience. To be able to I guess play every game and not miss a game just makes me really proud that you know with the work that I've done probably just more on an individual basis. So what drives Ebony to go above and beyond what's expected? Always getting that edge. Um, the more you do, the better you're going to be. And if you can stay injury free, um, you're on the park a lot more. And I found that, you know, Pilates keeps my body in sound. Her enthusiasm for Pilates has encouraged many of the men to join her in the off season. Rory Sloan, Riley O'Brien, um, Ben Keyes, Andy McPherson, Jordan Bartz. Jimmy Rose jumped on board this year. Um, yeah, just to name a few. For Ebony, it's also a welcome break. I just think I like I love being able to come somewhere different. It's not like a gym, so I'm not lifting heavy weights. I feel like not only am I working, but like I'm stretching out my body. Um, so I just, yeah, I feel great after a session. She's driven by a desire to be the best she can and set an example to others. I see a lot of, I guess, talent kind of not work hard and they don't, you know, really get to reach their full potential. So making sure that I'm leading by example and yeah, I never ask anything more, um, you know, of my teammates that I wouldn't do. So how would she like to be seen by her opponents? Hard to play against, tough, and because I, I wouldn't want anyone to come up against and think they're going to have an easy day. In her coach's words, Ebony is a competition trailblazer, showing the way for the next generation of AFLW players. Just want to yeah, hold up that cup again and yeah, it'd be so much. Thanks, Belinda. Well, I'm delighted that another familiar face will be joining us each week this year. Tom Duday is going to talk to teammates about their favourite Crows whopper moment. And first up, it's Wayne Miller. We're here for Wayne Miller's Whopper moment. He's my draft buddy, uh, coming to the club the same year. He is one of the all-time good humans that I've been around, so I'm very excited to see what he comes up with here. Wayne, welcome, how are you feeling? No, I'm all good, mate. The body's good, you ready to go? <laughs> body's all good. All right, so go. let's get into it then. Your Whopper moment, talk us through it. Yeah, so my Whopper moment, I think it was the second um, showdown in 2018, more known for the Josh Jenkins is it hit the post or was <laughs> yeah. it the goals? Can he go again? Can he go again? Josh Jenkins, JJ! JJ! Whatever you want to call him! I just remember that night being super tight, like all night, and then the fourth quarter was just sort of back and forth, crowd was up and about, and then that happening was sort of like, what's going on? Is it a point? Is it a goal? Um, yeah, it just settled down, it became like eerie. Yeah, it was like it just sort of a weird moment. Then once it sort of got declared as a goal, the crowd went nuts. A goal! Were you on the field at the time? I was on the field at the time. I reckon I, I was, probably was around sort of 60 metre mark. I'm sort of JJ's, I just remember JJ saying set up for zone. So it was yep. like, what a, like all right, we'll set up for a zone, but I sort of thought it was a goal. And then you're looking at the replay like, does it look like I hit the post? Or? Yeah. Thank you for joining us. No, no, um, thanks for me. That's a great whopper moment. That's something that I know a lot of Crows fans will love and remember, and Port fans <laughs> will probably despise you for bringing it up. But thank you for joining us. It was no. good to chat. Thanks, Tommy. Every time you attend an Adelaide Crows home game, you could score a free whopper from Hungry Jacks. Simply download the Hungry Jacks app for your chance to win. Still to come on the Crows show, we'll return to training and learn about the different coaching roles. Welcome back to The Crows Show. We're in the Adelaide Oval change rooms and as the season unfolds, we'll show you some of the other game day facilities. 
Now, when players hit the training track, Matthew Nix calls the shots, but he's supported by four assistant coaches and the high performance team. So, how do they all work together to achieve the best outcome? Thanks to the club's long-standing association with Dr Jones and partners, we can get a clearer picture of what happens. Main training sessions are designed uh, mainly by Burgess at the start. He'll go through from the fitness point of view, um, how many minutes we, he wants to get out there, what sort of work rate he wants. So we, as coaches in conjunction with him, we'll, we'll finalise, I guess, the length of the session. And then we uh, come up with the drills. We vary with the detail we give the players before each session. So like sometimes we will we'll have a strong educational session, go through clips, go through vision, um, have a big discussion on areas we need to improve or, or get better at. Um, and sometimes we might just hit them straight out there, get out there, let's get into it straight away and treat it more like a game. So um, we do vary that, but we certainly post-session go through a fair bit of what we've done and, and educate the boys and show them on the things that we are doing well and, and things that we still need to just sharpen up on. The sessions are all working together with all the coaches. With the, so you've got the Darren Burgess and High Performance that will work on more so how long the training sessions and the drills are going for, depending what they are. So we might have an impact drill that we only want to go for three or four minutes and there might be more of a longer running drill that um, we want to go for 10 or 12 to make sure they get their conditioning in. And then as coaches, we'll work around that to the extent of um, what our particular focus is this week. So if we've got three or four minutes of contest, it might be more around stoppage. We can just do normal hand scrimmage ground level balls um, and certainly 10 or 12 minutes of a more length running we might be focusing more on our offense rather than our defense if we need to um, if we believe as coaches we need to get a little bit better in that area because what we want is when we're doing training sessions we, we need them to replicate what's actually happening in round one two or three so it's a waste of time if we're doing something as coaches and we think it's working and the players then come to us and go well nah there's more heat around me there's there's too open or you know we need it more condensed we need more pressure um, so we certainly go to them and and ask them questions, how did it feel? You know, did that feel enough to you game like that you're getting what you need to get out of it to, to make sure you're, we're, in, uh, we're really prepared for the upcoming game? This year, the Adelaide Crows are asking you to silence the siren. Head to tickertech.com.au to secure your seats and cheer the team as loud as you can. This year marks the third season the Crows' major partner, Toyota, has provided uniforms to more than 100 women's sides across Australia. And it's all thanks to their Good For Footy gear grants program. Recently, during the AFLW's Good For Footy round, Toyota gave two grassroots clubs the opportunity to play in their new gear in a curtain raiser at Norwood Oval. Hi, my name's Taylor Eastwood. I'm the head coach of Mount Compass Football Club. To come all the way out to Norwood before uh, the Crows game is, is such an honour and the girls are loving every minute of it. My name's Georgie Evans. Uh, my nickname's G. I've been playing on and off my whole life and I play for Smosh West Lakes Football Club. It's a huge privilege to be playing before an AFLW game, especially growing up for me, being um, a senior player now, I didn't have any role models to look to. So now that there's AFLW, I love that I have all these players to look up to and you know, the best in the business to be playing in front of them is just amazing, it's unreal. I'm Brad Day from the Smosh West Lakes Footy Club, um, coach for the senior A grade. Tired of good footy programs uh, uh, are fantastic. Um, women's footy is obviously just growing every year and we've seen that. We've had um, fantastic numbers at our club. We're going to field two women's teams again this year. I'm Jade Blake. I'm the women's football director at Smosh West Lakes. The Toyota Good for Footy grant in particular has been super helpful for Smosh women's. Um, yeah, the, it's community football. It, uh, we just don't exist without grants like that and it just creates opportunities like this today. So yeah, they're so important to us. Toyota Good for Footy program has been awesome for our club. So we, we've been able to get new jumpers um, and the facilities that we've been able to use with the grants. It's really grown our program um, and yeah, the girls have really benefited from it. Grassroots Footy appreciates all the support it can get. Now, Big Sam Jacobs, well, he's been a fan favourite for ages. He has a new role this year and after the break, we'll find out more.
When the Crows Reserves team debuted in the Sandfall in 2014, it joined Australia's oldest state league competition. This year, the side has a couple of high-profile additions, assistant coach Sam Jacobs and former top 10 national draft pick Nathan Freeman. With the help of Bendigo Bank, let's check out how the squad is shaping up. So I think I've always had a little passion in coaching and I think it was an important stage in my career. Um, unfortunately I did my knee playing local footy last year and um, sort of that took me away from my playing career. So um, the opportunity came up to work with the SANFL team and it seemed a natural fit. For me, I think I think the SANFL group just complement the AFL guys. You know, it's been obviously been well spoken about, and, and it's no secret that we are going through a rebuild at the um, AFL level, and hopefully we're coming to the end of that. But the SANFL guys we've got together are, are probably, you know, hardened SANFL players if you want to call them that. A lot of guys have played league footy in the past, and um, they're bigger bodies, and I feel you know they've got pretty strong leadership around them. So I think when when the younger guys come back from the AFL system and are still learning to play SANFL footy, these guys that are in a SANFL NFL development squad um, will be able to help them and, and lead them in the right way. So the inclusion of Nathan Freeman has been massive for our program. Um, I guess I'll start with off field. He's, he's been a really strong leader for us. You know, he trains with a real purpose. You can tell he's come from an AFL environment. We've only seen him in, in a couple of trial games so far, but you know, his, his ability to attack the contest, to want the ball um, and to make our team better has been, been second to none. So for those fans that are watching SANFL this year, I think you'll see a real hungry team. Mick Godden's been in charge for, this is his second official year, but he's on a real mission to, to get this team back to finals footy and that's where we want to be. So we're, we're real ambitious that we can give it a red hot crack this year and, and hopefully put the Crows back into finals contention. You'll be able to catch more of Sam Jacobs when he co-hosts the new Crows radio show on Triple M every Sunday morning at nine. Well, this year we've changed the way we're selecting our Crow in the crowd each week. Now, when you take a photo of yourself or a friend at one of our Crows games, simply post it to your social media account with the hashtag WeFlyersOne. So get snapping and good luck. You could win a double pass to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. Once again this season, senior coach Matthew Nix will join us each week to answer a fan's question, all thanks to Flight Centre. Today, Cody from Roxby Downs wants to know where in particular he's noticed improvements in the squad this year. Uh, thanks for your question, Cody. Look, from an improvement point of view, probably the standout has been our on-field leadership. We've, uh, we still have a young group, the youngest in the competition, but in amongst that, we've got some outstanding leaders, uh, especially on the football field. You know, guys like Ned McHenry, who stepped up, he's become a really loud voice out on the ground. Uh, Chase Jones behind the ball. McPherson's been outstanding behind the ball. Tommy Duda, who's, who's obviously uh, you know, been flagged as a leader for the footy club, has, has come along again. So that's been the most pleasing part, is our ability to, to understand how it is we play and then be able to voice that and educate it you know, out on the ground. That just about wraps up our first Crows show for 2022. The opening game against Frio is not far away. Don't forget to keep an eye on at the Crows show on Twitter for all the latest news and check out the club's social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for your company and together with Belinda Sloan, I look forward to joining you again next weekend on 7. Bye for now. This program was proudly brought to you by the new Pork Belly Deluxe Burger, only at Hungry Jack's. <laughs>